So we're going to not technically restart, restart the show, but everything we just recorded is going to just stay on Twitch because fuck it. I'm not going to try to do that nonsense. So obviously he's Zach, I'm Chad. Zach was being very cruel to me. My internet died and he wasn't showing me any respect. Nah, um, happens all the time. Remember my family died. The internet. Have some goddamn respect, why don't you? Mm, someone's going to take an issue with that one. <laughs> yeah, that one going on the tombstone. Zachary didn't respect when my internet died. I was a beloved family member. Fuck you. <laughs> Who, whose tombstone is it going on? Mine. No. <laughs> I love the idea of someone carrying a grudge literally to their grave. <laughs> it's the only way to go. <laughs> okay, so we're back. We're going to talk Impact Wrestling. So I was trying to figure out which episode... Okay, so yeah, I mean, I was going to, but I got to say this. So I was trying to figure out which episode of Home Improvement was on, right? Mm-hmm. And Jill was crying. I'm like, well, Randy's too old for this to be the underdeveloped thyroid thing. So, oh, yeah. So so which one is it? I'm like, is it the one where she has to get a hysterectomy? Because I, I feel like that one wasn't that bad. But then I saw them at a funeral parlor. And, and you got to remember, I'm watching this without the sound on, so it's not like I can right. just... You know, go in and turn it on. And then I realized as soon as the parlor there, I was like, oh, these are the sisters. Oh, this is the episode where she finds out her dad died. Mm. So it it was it was lay sad. Lay sad. So anyway, uh, now we're here talking about Impact Wrestling. Uh, I would advise you to go check out uh, the IPWF episode from last week. It was pretty damn good. Uh, okay. So, with that being said, we got the opener. It's Brian Cage, Eddie Edwards, and then eventually Michael Elgin. Went nearly 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. What did you think of it? Um, I mean, you can't, you can't really say too much bad about this match with, I mean, especially considering who's in it. <laughs> it was, it was a really good match. Um, my, my one little little tiny nitpick is maybe have um, Elgin run in a few minutes earlier so we don't get quite as much of Eddie and Cage because that's a main event match in and of itself. Mm-hmm. But the the pairing of matches were, were both fantastic. Um, I will say last... The last show we had, and we called out people doing the dives and the flippies and things. Uh, M- Michael Elgin is another one. Doesn't need to be doing flips. Does not need to be diving to the outside. Does not need to be doing flips to the outside. He's just a solid block of muscle, and just let him do that. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, still a fantastic match. Do you hear that, Brian Cage? Do you hear that? Yeah, I'm sure your vertebrae hears that. Right. I think I agree with you on the idea of it being uh, the only minor issue being that it happened too late in the match. Um, I think it came about ten minutes in yeah. of a near tw- thirty minute match because, like, yeah, it, it was near. Th- it was thirty minutes on on the Rolodex, but it was actually mm-hmm. probably only twenty two altogether because right. you have to ke- you know keep in mind they went to two commercial breaks while the match was going on. Um, I would have had it, you know, as soon as Eddie slid in or as soon as Brian Cage slid in to start the match, that's when I would have had Elgin run down. And I would have had the three of them brawl. Then I would have had the referees try to break them up. And then I would have had, you know, someone go, okay, well, if you mother truckers want to keep acting like a bunch of stupid dung beetles, I'm going to book you in a triple threat match and we're going to see how you guys like damn apples. Where's Teddy Long? Right. Well... No, we would need a, a second a, a, a second run in then because yeah, I mean, he's gonna I make mean, it yes. a tag team player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I th- <laughs> yes, <laughs> Teddy would absolutely <laughs> see. Teddy wouldn't even wait for a fourth guy to come out. He'd just be like, uh, "Bring me someone from the back." Because we're making this tag team match. Right, I don't no. give a shit that there's three people. <laughs> we're, we're we're going full into this joke. 
So three guys brawl, and Teddy Long comes out and goes, "We're gonna make this a tag team match, player." And everyone's just like looking around, like there's and 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 Eddie goes, "There's only three of us." <laughs> and then he grabs the trophy, four, and then and then like Brian Cage puts you know pushes Eddie's hand out, no 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 Eddie, no 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 Eddie. And then Teddy Long just goes, "Hey you in the crowd, you want to get in?" <laughs> and the guy just shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's stone cold. That'd be fucking funny. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's like an SNL skit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do I do feel like um that is one thing that impact is missing is that there's no like there's no figurehead at the top to just make random matches and shit i mean we we get like oh josh matthews oh it's now going to be a triple threat match it's like okay who who's the who is the authority that's making these decisions that's it's something that i feel like we're missing and don't and for the love for the love of all that is decent for the love of every pupper especially you crypto you're a good boy he's watching titans i gotta catch up on that we're talking about it tomorrow (laughs) He's such a good pupper. Um, <laughs> of course he is. He's a crypto. He's a crypto. Crypto papa. He is. But uh, I mean, I w- I would say bring in someone to act as a manager or a GM or what the fuck. But don't do the same thing the WWE has been doing for the past twenty years and making them the villain. <laughs> Impact is notoriously besides the Hogan era, which. And the Dixie yes. era, which less said about those six years, the better. Um, before then, Jim Cornette mm-hmm. was only to serve as a figurehead. Then before yeah. that, we had Larry Zabisco and the uh, TNA committee. We can mm-hmm. we we've seen for what was that six years, give or take. Yeah, ha- the ability to have. On screen figureheads. And they don't need to be a big part of the show. They just need to have someone there as an authority figure. I don't right. care who it is. In fact, you have the perfect person on your brand to do that. She loves the brand. She's loyal to a fault and she speaks highly of it. Have Gail Kim be the general manager. Yeah. She doesn't need to be involved in angles. She doesn't need to get involved in, in uh, uh, storylines. Just have her come out every once in a while. You know, I, I have her become essentially the the uh, the face of the company in that regard. You know, whenever mm-hmm. there's an announcement, Gail can makes it. Whenever there's a, a, a string of matches that that get you know made for pay per view, she's posting about it. You know, she's being interviewed about the health of the company. I, I, you can do, use her as a character in that regard, without having to go full into the idea of of heel ownership. That's a dead right. angle. It gets dead and buried. It is. I mean, this was actually, it's actually something that, again, listening to Jim Cordette podcast, it's a very interesting thing is that the Vince, the Mr. McMahon thing came out from the Montreal screw job. Mm-hmm. And it was part of, it's part of what made Stone Cold Steve Austin so big is that he was the middle class guy going against the corporation and people loved it. And then the WWE has stuck with that. For twenty year, for over twenty years, they've stuck with the angle that you should watch the stuff that the company is putting out. But the company itself is evil, <laughs> in storyline at least. <laughs> so, I mean, there are a lot of people that will tell you that it's also not an angle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It's very odd to have the entire company be so evil for so very long and be like, but you should you should enjoy the product that the company is putting out. It's like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. Having an evil having an evil authority just doesn't make sense in the in a long term manner of thinking. <laughs> it's kinda like women telling me that men are more violent, but yet every single major head of every single war profiting company is ran by a woman. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! <laughs> Who's running Lockheed Martin? It ain't a dude. Ah, <laughs> uh, war profiting. You can be a man or a woman and enjoy it. <laughs> it's uh, it's equal opportunity, right? 
There's no sexism in war profiteering. <laughs> no. Just cold hard dollars. <laughs> and think about that. You know that's a conversation that was had. I'm not going to ever dispute any qualifications on any woman who gets a job. But you know there's always that extra thing that people look at for why that person gets the job. And you know someone on the board goes, listen, we kill about 400 million immigrants a year in, in F. Fluja. We're going to have a bad reputation. Let's look for the most qualified woman that we can. So that way, if they insult us or try to come at us for being, you know, monsters who make money off of death, we can say, but we have a female CEO. <laughs> Brilliant, Thaddeus. Brilliant. See, <laughs> See Thaddeus knows what's going on right? because then he can just turn, turn it right back around at him. <laughs> right? Oh, you're just sexist because we have a female <laughs> head of our country. It's it's brilliant, man. Like those those war profiteering companies, they know what's up. Again, I think those women probably well deserve those jobs. Don't get me wrong. I think they're yes. quite suitable being CEOs. But there's always some like there's always going to be more than one qualified person. So what makes that person mm-hmm. more qualified? For me, it's my sterling personality and my ability to work well with others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, I, I am learning to bite my tongue so hard. So, I, 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 yeah. as, you, as you know, I, I am a writer. In one mm-hmm. of my new postings, I have an editor. Yes. And my editor got on me. I don't want to say got on me because she, she, she's very good at her job. I just don't always agree with her. Um, mm-hmm. And I was covering, did you know that Alberto El Patron is facing Tito Ortiz in a fight? I had no idea. <laughs> well, you're not an MMA fan, so, so I'm not that surprised. It's for Combates Americas, and they do very well yeah. in in uh, middle middle America, like mid, you know, not, mid, not Midwest America. I mean, like Middle Americas, like well, Mexico, like Central America. Yes, yeah, Central America. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and uh, they do very well there in numbers, and they have Alberto mm-hmm. Patron taking on Tito Ortiz. But I I was told that I have to call him Alberto Del Rio. I'm like, but. That's not what he goes by. It's not what Combates Americas is calling him. <laughs> it's not what he's calling himself on Twitter or in interviews. Like, w- no one is calling him that anymore. But apparently we have to stay on brand with uh, search results, essentially. So since we were... So it's still Alberto El Patron. Well, no, because they've been calling him Del Rio for years. Oh. So, so <laughs> yes. So I have to knowingly do something I know is wrong, but it, it's kind of one of those things like it's not a hill to die on. You know what I mean? Right. Like, all right, I'll just shut up and do it because at the end of the day, I need the money. It's not right. like you're telling me to lie. Yeah. And I mean, to an extent, it makes sense because people are going to know him a lot. Right. The majority of people are going to know him from his time in the WWE. It's all about analytics and Google searches. So I understand why Del Rio is the, is the given. I'm just saying this is one of those, like, and, and the thing is, this is a specifically me issue because I have been railing against this for fucking 12 years. And now I'm part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I hate it, but whatever. Yeah, she, she's good. I feel like I've actually gotten better as a writer because she's constantly correcting all of my mistakes. All well, there you of go. my mistakes. I mean all of them <laughs> in every single article, no matter even if it's wrong or not. I have nightmares. <laughs> I wake up thinking I've been criticized. <laughs> it's like I'm dating again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to date again. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to adopt like a 17 year old and be like, all right, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is all I got to do. You get like a 17 year old kid and a dog. Boom. Family. <laughs> Fuck the idea of marriage. I, I, I would, I would <laughs> die. I would die so hard. I, I would be like would... all those old or early nineties. Uh, father stuck in marriages. Yes, yeah, sweetie. Of course, honey. Whatever you uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be you'd be an Al Bundy. <gasps> no, I wouldn't even be Al Bundy because Bundy snapped like every episode. He was always yelling at Peggy. I would be. Um, That's true. You ever see? Uh, you ever see Airborne? Yeah. With the uh, with the Seth- Disney Channel movie. No. Mm. Seth Green was in it. Jack Black. 
Don't know that one. Though. Okay. It was skateboarding. S- nope. It was inline skating. And one oh, of those, right? yes. Then it was, okay. It, okay. It was, I, it, I, I think it was a Disney film, but it wasn't a Disney Channel film. Okay, so I I saw it on the Disney Channel, so that was that's yeah. where I got mistaken. So basically, it's a story about a kid who, whose parents are like doctors without borders or something like that, and they and they go to Africa for a year, but they don't want to take their son with them because he's still in high school, and they don't think it's and they're going to a dangerous war torn part of the uh, of the continent. I mean, that makes sense to me. <laughs> right. So and this was all planned out. It wasn't like. All right, now we're dropping you off in the middle of nowhere, last minute. So they, they set it up with, I think it was like the mom's sister. And, mm. uh, the, you know, they're going to drop him off with his aunt in Cincinnati with his cousin. He's going to stay there until he finishes out his uh, senior year. And his cousin, right. Seth Green, and his uh, aunt is the overweight woman from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, they think he's just oh. a rad dude, don't you know? <laughs> and <Christ>. the <laughs> Chris! <laughs> <laughs> so um the father in that and the mother's like very doting she's like oh you know whatever seth green's name is oh you you just cook and make so many good friends and look at you you look so handsome and then she, she's like and merton doesn't he look so handsome yes he looks very handsome dear <laughs> that's gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be walking around constantly looking at random things like, wait, why am I in this room? What did I come in here for? I've lost my wooden lift. <laughs> I'm going to watch Airborne tonight, I think. i got to watch Titans first. God damn it. How many episodes are you behind? Well, well how many episodes are there? Uh, 13? Uh, yes, 13. Uh, series came back in October. It's one carried thir- 12. I'm behind on 12. <laughs> Ah, saw the first episode. Yep. I uh, see. I did a little better. Started binging it Monday and had watched the gotten up to the second episode. So a little bit ahead of you. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, the, the the bonus is like I know I'm gonna have four or five hours tonight. So mm-hmm. I can I can get through two through six, and then tomorrow I I can easily get through six episodes in the span of twelve hours, mm-hmm. while still make uh, keeping pace with my work duties. There you go. So let's move it on. 